what's going on. I'm ready for the talk. Yeah. <laughs> so I brought a lore bag. Yep. So nice. What's going on, guys? It's Nick from Surfcast in the Island. Um, this is my fellow uh, Captain Joey Leggio, Chasing Tail TV. Um, and today we're going to be talking about um, what lures I should put in his bag. He's getting back into the um, surf casting realm. It's been a while. And, uh, <laughs> it's yeah, been, it's a been a while. while. He's a boat guy <laughs> primarily. You know, I created my channel primarily for um, surf casting. But, you know, I'm a boat guy. It's always good to go back to my roots and what I started out in. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to fill the bag and uh, let's get to it. All right, so the uh, first lures I'm going to talk about to fill Joey's bag would be... <laughs> One of the most, if not the most versatile, would be in the bucktails, the banana head. I've talked about this in previous lectures. I'm not going to harp on it. Something I'd use in back bays as a you know fast rise and slow fall. Um, very productive for fish that aren't actively feeding and uh, whatnot. Gives them a presentation they're not typical to. Um, perfect at imitating a mullet with that curved head. You guys can see there. And uh, whatnot. You can you know, change it up. You know, black bucktails and whatnot if you're fishing around the new moon if you're more of a night guy i'll get into the night bag later but this is primarily a day bag um if you're fishing more up front in the inlets i would go to this is a one and a quarter ounce andros bullheaded jig um it cuts the uh, water a lot nicer because it doesn't have a smiling bill i know a lot of guys like the rip splitters and whatnot personally i'm not a fan of them um but yeah that pretty much covers you for bucktails um you put you know fat cow jig strips on them he's got the hat on I love them. Uh, they're, they're great. I gotta get you one. Uh, yeah. Have the sure. guys are fat cow send you a hat. Yeah. But Talk to my buddies there for you. In terms of the bucktail, it's probably <coughs> one of the most, if not the most significant lore in my arsenal. Being a kid, you know, imitate mullet, herring, bunker, uh, peanut bunker, spearing, the anchovies, and whatnot. Um, yeah, that's pretty much covers that. All right, so uh, next type of lures we're going to talk about are tins. Um, in specific, this is a one and a half ounce runoff. Something like this, any slender body represents a sand deal, spearing, and whatnot. Um, the greatest thing about a tin that I love is it cuts the wind great. Uh, you can't just go to any South Shore beach and any day of the week and, you know, expect to, you know, cut through a 30 knot wind. It's just not going to happen with your favorite plug. With this, you'll cut through the water, no, uh, cut through the wind, no problem. Um, Ralph Oda has a saying, I believe it goes, you know, with plastics and water, good, but with tin you always win, or you always win with tin, either way. Um, very productive, you know, it's, I feel like it's a very underutilized war that should also go in Joey's bag. A lot of guys, it's a lost art, per se, and that they don't use it properly, or they don't use it in the way they should. Um, right next to it, I have, um, this is an A17 Greeny Diamond Jig, everyone knows this, and something I want to point out is... And Joey pointed out is this is a hammer jig. A lot of boat guys use this. And what hammered is it's slated. So when the sunlight hits it, it reflects it in different ways other than straight onto it and straight back. I feel like that's important because, you know, it um, really gives it some erratic, you know, presentation that the fish aren't used to or something that they actually see in nature as opposed to what we produce and what we throw. Um, something to point out about the two tins, last but not least. Um... If I had a choice to throw one, it would be the runoff, and the reason being is it folds up a lot easier in the wind and increases castability. I believe I mentioned this in my previous lectures, but with the greeny tail, it has a lot more wind friction or air, you know, air friction when it's going through, because it tends to catch when you're casting, and that will affect casting distance. And if these fish are on an outer bar, you're not going to get them on the open beach as efficient. Yep. All right, so uh, next types of baits we're going to talk about are soft plastic swim baits and hard swimmers as well. So um, this is a Z-Man. This is a, I believe it's either a five or six inch diesel minnow. Um, they're very, very effective, especially when the bluefish are around. Mm. I know you guys got, we catch a lot of bluefish local. Very elastic. They're not going to bite through it. Um, this is something I would throw in the back bays, um, you know, western sound. Um, you can throw it up front, but I feel like bucktails and stuff like that's a lot more productive. Um, yeah, it, it's it's very productive in that sense, back bait applications and whatnot. Something very similar to that would be the Tsunami Swim Shad. And again, it comes in a variety of uh, shapes, sizes, and colors, but I'm keeping it as general as I can for this video. I usually throw a bunker color. This is just a whiteout color. Again, great for the western sound. 
Um, what varies with this type of swim bait is it has a different drop as opposed to having a lead head which you go straight up and straight down. The lead on the bottom is a lot more evenly dispersed so when you, when you jig it, it has a much slower, uh, much <coughs> slower flutter like you would see with the banana head bucktail compared with the bull headed jig. Gives it a different presentation, something more enticing to the fish if they're very finicky and groggy when you're fishing a high pressure system because low pressure systems they tend to feed, you know, no matter what you throw. But that's not always going to be the case. You got to be a versatile fisherman as Joey is as well. Last but not least, what I would throw in my day bag would be everyone knows them at this point. You know, they're, you know, um, close relative to the bombers and whatnot. It's a Daiwa SP Minnow. What makes it better is it's got a great um, weight dispersal in that you shake it. Weight goes to the bottom, loads the rod up a lot easier. I know you guys use yeah. these on the boat as well as the Mag Daughters, so I'll, I'll get into them later on. Um, but they just work. You know, my, <coughs> my personal best, my I talked about in the past, my 40 was caught on. It's an SP Minnow, it was a silver. Um, but regardless, same action and uh, whatnot. But I consider it a hybrid lure too, because this is not only something you throw during the day. Um, I find that it's even more productive at night, like a lot of guys that I've mentioned. Um, you could also throw a mag daughter. I'll get into that later on. You know, with those BBs in it, like when you're explaining the cast. So when you load your rod and you you cast, all those BBs are now going to shoot to the tail of that lure, forcing mm -hmm. it to fly yeah. further. You know, and that's what you're talking about with the the, the BBs, the bull bearings, mm -hmm. whatever they put in that lure. I don't even know what it is, but yeah, that's basically bearings, the same. Yeah. yeah, and once it hits the water, you start working it, they straighten out, and now you got a much more yeah. natural presentation. If they were to stay in the back or the front, it would go tail down or ta uh, head sure. down. Um, another important thing, um, I didn't mention yet, and I will, is when you're throwing anything with multiple hooks on it, whether it's a, a pencil pop or a dot or whatnot, when you make a cast. You want to apply pressure to that spool before the plug hits the water because often, you know, oftentimes the leader will wrap around one of these hooks I've seen that before, sure. yeah. and it totally screws up, you know, kaput goes your cast pretty much. And you have to reel plug in backwards <clears> and <throat> no bass or bluefish is going to look at a plug coming in backwards with the, with the head facing it being like, oh, this looks great to eat, you know. <laughs> I've seen it, bounce, it hits the water, bounces. Yeah, it bounces and, bounces and, and boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, it keeps spinning. That, spinning. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a waste of your cast, you know. You want to be as efficient as you can. Yeah. Make as many casts as you can where you think fish are. Um, if you just don't present it right and uh, you just, you're not going to draw fish and you're not going to get bites. So... I'll get into my next uh, type. So the last type of plugs I'll be talking about are top waters. Um, these range anywhere from uh, little neck poppers and whatnot or walking baits, which I'll get into. So the first one I'm going to show you is, I know you you know about these. Um, these it's are, actually an old school lure. It's an old school lure. Yeah. This, this is an Adam 40. Um, this was the Super Strike before there was the Super Strike, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is great for the open beach. Just typical color. This is one of the, one of the few colors that Adam makes or made. In the yeah. beginning of the production. And the blue is darker there. It used yeah. to be a lighter blue. Now that's a much darker blue. Yeah, it's a much more accented blue that turns to the pearl white with glitter. Um, this is something I would typically throw on the open beach, uh, rough water. Um, and it just, it, it works. Uh, works great. Around the mullet run, you know, blue, it matches mullet and snapper perfectly. I would throw this out front. A lot of white water and whatnot because it's the same thing plug as opposed to what I'm going to show you next. Um... This is a cotton cordell. This is a classic. This is a smoky Joe color. This is something I would typically throw in the back bays. It's a must, 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 in my opinion. Um, you know, it draws so many fish to the top. I had one uh, one night. I think I mentioned a previous lecture where you know, everyone was throwing bucktails and SP minnows couldn't get a bite. I'm like, you know what? Let me switch it up. Throw a pencil popper on. Boom, get one first cast. That was at nighttime. At night. And usually they say you don't use color. those at night. That's funny. No, yeah. it's weird. You typically throw, like I would mention uh, next, is you throw red fins and metal lips at night. Something that doesn't have a lot of action. But, you know, sometimes, like I've said, the small changes make, you know, great, That's great cool. differences. Which, <laughs> it blows my mind. But, you know, when they want something, they want something. Next one I'm going to show you is, this is an old school Gibbs wood plug. This is something I would definitely throw in your bag. Mm -hmm. You know, bluefish tear these up. It has some teeth marks, you guys can see. That's a great color, too. This is great for the bunker. I'm, you know, you use this color a lot, but on the bunker spoons mm -hmm. on the boat, when you're trolling, you know, the Maja spoons and whatnot. That color. Great, great color. Um, caught plenty of fish. It, this resembles a bunker great. Something I would typically throw in the spring. 
as opposed to some of these other lures. Um, but you know, spring fall, you know, some of these lures also apply. Last but not least, I'm going to show you the Tsunami Talking Popper. Great, great plug. It's a hybrid plug as opposed to the, the, um, the two pencils I showed you and the one popping plug. Because like a regular popper has a concave lip like a spoon would have in which it could spit water. You, you know, three turns of the handle pop. But if you also want to um, vary your retrieve, you can actually walk the dog with this too because it's, it's a cigar style bait like these other ones I showed you. Caught plenty of fish too on this. Something I'd throw up front. This is an XD, which means it's weighted. Um, but yeah, very versatile. Um, I've caught plenty of fish on other sizes too. The smaller, the bigger, this size. Very good. It works well. But uh, in terms of top water, it's very one dimensional as opposed to some of these other baits. Mm -hmm. In that, you know, you can only work, you can only catch fish <coughs> on the top. It, it doesn't dive. You can't cover, you know, various um, depths of the water column. Um, I refer to them as what I would call niche wars. They, they, um, what do you call it? You know, they serve one purpose and one purpose only. And I feel like the metal lip is, you know, the end all be all being, you know, the, you have just the right separation, you know, I have just the right bait around and, you know, but they work, you know, in those types of situations. So, uh, in terms of using lures, that's the art of presentation. Um, you have to constantly cast and reel, cast and reel, cast and reel, but... There are times where the fish are so finicky where they'll only eat the actual thing, whether it's bunker, sand eels, and whatnot. And if you have the bigger bait around, um, you may have to go to the dark side. I've done it. I've been guilty of it, whether it's guilty. the boat. Yeah, <laughs> guilty. <laughs> Both of us, you know. But we, won't, we, we, catch, we catch big bass, and sometimes you got to use bait to catch these fish. And when I'm on the beach, uh, it's very, very similar to the snag and drop technique. This is your typical bunker snagger. You can find these in any stores. Um, I believe Orange Tackle, is that the name of the company? It comes in the boxes. Sure. I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but they're bunker snaggers regardless. They do the same thing. They're, um, they're weighted, and it's very similar to the snag and drop technique on the boat where you cast in the middle of the pot. If it's close enough to the beach, <coughs> such as primarily surf casting, just let it swim, and you know the live bait does its own work. You don't have to retrieve the plug. Just let it sit. Um, different than using a live eel, but this is not an eel talk. But again, it's a live bait, and you know sometimes live bait works best. Um, actually, with that being said, the new rules now is you're actually not allowed to do that anymore. So what you do is you can snag the bunker, bring it in, and now you have to go to surf the hook. Yeah. So that's the new rules. So yeah, yeah. back <laughs> back before the new rules came. December thirty first, you could do that. January first, yeah, now they just changed but, the rule. So yeah, yeah that's something. Yeah, about I don't know. I don't know how well. they're gonna uh, enforce that type of deal, but uh, that's back in the day. That's what we used to yeah. do: snag, let the bunker swim and drop, but. You know, the problem with that is a lot of these fish get gut hooked with the treble. It's not like a circle. It yeah. catches them in the corner of the mouth. A lot of these fish get gut hooked. People cut them off, you know, and they just spiral towards the bottom. You're not um, surviving. I don't care what they say. Yeah. There's no way a bass is surviving with that thing lodged into its belly with no. three hooks with a piece of lead. There's no food. Nothing's going to get past that. And nobody really knows how long it takes for that to rust out. But. Yeah, and that's another talk um, yeah. about, you know, what they're going to do going <coughs> forward. But, yeah, that pretty much covers, you know, how you decipher from using a plug, and if the fish are very keyed in on a certain bait, you might have to go to the dark side and give them what you want, uh, give them what they want. Yep. So in terms of filling the bag, I'll go step by step of which lures would go where. Um, this is your typical 10 tube, two, four, six, eight, ten. Fill as many lures as you like, uh, depending on their size. Some lures warrant you could fit two. Um, some lures are big enough or too big and the fact that you would have to fit one in each. So in terms of bucktails and whatnot, um, if I don't have them in a plastic bag, I'll just put them in what you call tin tubes. You can see here, I know it's kind of tough to see. You guys can see those ridges on the inside. I know it's kind of tough, you can see the drains though. But pretty much you just slip it in the side like that, You like a tin pops right in pops right out very simple you do it I'm not gonna do it with every bucktail but a wide range of varieties you can do it with um, same thing goes for tins um, Joey would put it in his bag um, you just fold the tin up like this or he would do straight it makes much more of a difference if you're doing it with the diamond jig and whatnot but just fill it in the tin tube like that you can see it hanging out 
take it out. Um, these get a little more tricky because of the swim baits. They have a very long tail. Um, same thing, put them in a tin tube, but if you have them in a package, like they come in, I'm sure you guys have seen the tsunami uh, packages and whatnot, the Ziplocs. I would just put them, same thing with my lunch bag. Uh, if I had my bucktails in a lunch bag, those little Ziplocs, put them in this back space here. A lot of guys do that, a lot of room back here. Um, a lot of problem, uh, a problem I've run into is if you, if you put a swim bait like this up here on one of these ridges, go close the bag, you're gonna bend your tail out of shape and it's gonna affect and uh, impart different action, action that you wouldn't want on the bait. Um, same thing, another swimmer. If I had it in a, you know, the bag it came in or a, a lunch bag, put it back here. Um, if not, you can try to fit in one of these tin tubes. With these, with these bigger tsunami shads, I find that difficult. So that's why I tend to keep them in the package. Um, let's move on to the uh, SP minnows. Very simple. Just put them on the ridge like you would a regular plug. Um, He's a big lure too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, this is we don't know what this is. It's very interesting lore. <laughs> yeah. This is the OB flying pencil popper. Um, Joey found this. He brought it to my attention. I haven't used it, but maybe I'll pick up a couple and get back to him or you see, yeah. to me and see. It's got um, a lot of ridges on it. Like a lot of ridges. A lot of uh, surface. Uh, I would like to compare motion. this, especially to the eye. It looks a lot like a. Um, a tactical anglers like uh, I know Alberto Navy made that whole company excellent for the price you know great presentation of lures I know he also makes shout out to his tactical anglers clips excellent big game changer as opposed yeah. to you know cutting and retying cutting and retying when you have no every surfisherman has those you know, now the TA it's clips. a must the breakaway yeah. clips TA clips they pretty much put the coast lock swivels you know the snaps out of out of um, the out of the equation, out of the equation. You know, <laughs> gone. fish goes bites down on it yeah. Pops the clip open, you lose your fish. There you go. Is that a risk I want to take? I don't think so. Nope. So, same thing. Uh, what I wanted to show you is, say if I had two SP minnows in here, one on each ridge, what you can do is, instead of crossing the trebles, since there's four ridges on this bag, you could put it on the outside of one ridge, out of the four ridges. That way, you can see here the uh, the trebles aren't interlocking. That could be a problem because sure. you go pull one one plug out and then boom, you have another plug hanging right behind it. Uh, that's just something I don't want to deal with, especially on going to be starting to fish more at night. <laughs> that's a big problem. You drop a plug, you get a plug in your hand. Yeah, and, that sucks. You know, um, especially on the beach. Dude. Yeah, especially on the beach with no light because I don't fish with the light. Um, yeah, and just you fill these plugs any way you want. Doesn't really matter. You can put as many pencils in there, or as many uh, Adam Forties, or as many little neck poppers as you want. I got a question for you. How do you rinse your plugs when you're done for the night? How do I rinse them? Um, you know, just uh, just get your Ajax soap, your dishwashing soap, wash them off in a bucket, let them hang on the table, dry overnight, and whatnot. That's very important that you mention that. Some of these hooks are rusted out, whatnot. I gotta get yeah. better with maintaining my plugs. Because with some of these other lords, I'll show you. You don't rinse in the bag. You just take them out of the bag, right? Yeah, I take them out of the bag. But if I was in the soak and I was taking it, you know, up in the chest and whatnot, then I'll rinse my whole bag sure, out yeah, because the, bag, the yeah. bag's filling out, which is another important point. <clears throat> this bag, like many bags, has drainage holes, which will happen when you're swimming out to a rock or, you know, you're fishing an outer bar that you're walking to. That's meant to happen for two reasons. It's supposed to lighten the load of your uh, plug bag. And it's also to keep your lures from rusting out, and that's the last thing you want. Because with these plugs, um, let me see here. I don't have it on me, but the Super Strike plugs don't have split rings on the back, the little neck poppers. It's just the hook mended to the through wire. And the problem being with that is if you rust the hook out, it's much more difficult to change a hook out. Because mm -hmm. now you need channel lock pliers, and that's a pain in the ass. Because now you got to snip that part of the um, treble where it loops around. To get it off, then you gotta find split rings, and that mm -hmm. can change the action of the plug. Do they even sell open eye hooks anymore? I know back in the day, they sell the open eye hooks. I think they do, and then you, you squeeze them, you yeah. snip them with channel lock pliers or what it, whatever you, tight. yeah, whatever, whatever you uh, crimp them with. And uh, yeah, that pretty much covers how you fill the bag, whether it's trebles and bucktails. And I know a lot of bags these days, 
they come with the side pouches where you can put um, measuring tape or you know fat cow jig strips I know he's got the hat on you know always, the gotta, always gotta represent <laughs> shout out to them <laughs> oh man yeah it just goes on the side like this and you're pretty much a, a walking tank or a machine going down the beach during the day and that pretty much covers what you, you put in your day bag so shell grow it up put it on your shoulder head to the wash I don't think you can actually get this in the belt. No, it doesn't look like you can put yeah. a belt in this one. This is basically a shoulder harness and that's yeah. it. All right, so now we're going to be talking about uh, what I would put in Joe's bag or what I would recommend to Joe. Right the bag here. is getting filled, yeah. Yeah, it's getting getting loaded, <laughs> getting packed. Um, if you were to fish at nighttime, again, since I'm going to be working more now, I'm going to have to be limited to fishing mainly at night, with the exception of, you know, weekends and whatnot. Um, so I'll just mention the bucktail, you know. I mentioned it in the past. I'll mention it again. Daytime, nighttime plug, you know, fish it anywhere from the back bays, inlets, and open beach. Um, the harder the water moves, typically, um, the better the fishing of bucktails. You know, if you have a heavy sweep, that's bucktail heaven, like, you know, Billy the, Gre uh, Billy the Greek has said in his seminars, you know, I've watched him. Another guy I've been influenced by. Um, just a great plug to throw. It's the go-to plug on the South Shore, as far as I'm concerned. Any application, it works. You measure strips, yeah. Yeah, and this is pretty much what you throw on them. Fat cow jig strips. I mentioned them. I mentioned them again because they're the best. Um, yeah, and they just work. Um, and you always want to put it on. You don't really want to use a bucktail. Like you always want to have yeah, that strip on. That's there. very important because you know, the hair just affects where it's going to land in the water column. How you're going to work it. If it's the jig strip or otter tail, whatever you're using, that's what catches the fish. That's what imparts more yeah. action on the bucktail. The hairs just breathe. Um, the bucktail with the with the uh, swimmer on it. That's what gets that it to wiggle and whatnot. Uh, what I'm going to talk about now are wake baits that I would throw at night. This is a red fin. This is excellent, excellent at nighttime for, uh, especially in the back bays of smaller sizes. I know, um, you know, out in Montauk, they throw the seven inches and whatnot. Bigger fish, bigger profile, bigger bait. That's what's around, more likely than not in Montauk. Um, Why do you call it a wake bait? A wake bait? Okay. The reason being is, like a metal lip, which I'll show you, is it just wobbles ever so slow on a roll retrieve. And what that does is it just creates that natural V-wig in the water. When you think about it, blitzes don't happen in the middle of the night. You're not going to see bass slamming bait on top, typically, in the middle of the night. They're just looking for a nice, slow roll presentation. That's what a wake bait does with this lip. Um, and again, it just it crushes fish, especially when they're not in that feeding mode. Yeah. They're just, you know, looking for a reaction strike, have you will, as opposed to actively feeding on a moving tide. Um, so something similar to that, but of great size and a much bigger fish plug would be the old school Gibbs metal lip. A lot of guys would call it the Danny plug. Um, I know guys who told me at Cutty Hunk Island and whatnot, that's what yeah. they throw for those bigger fish. Um, it just works. I haven't had much experience with them, but I have thrown the smaller metal lips and they just catch fish. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, yeah, Danny was the know. original one. Yeah, I guess Danny Gibbs the bought it out. And Gibbs, yeah. the Gibbs plug. But, you know, still you can get the package. It will say Danny's on it. Mm -hmm. But great plug, you know, it's pretty obvious it would, it's pretty obvious what it would mimic, uh, you know, a bunker or, you know, a herring. But typically bunker, this is something you throw around the June moon or July, depending on where you're fishing, whether it's the canal or around here. Um, yeah, that pretty much covers um, wake baits. All right, so the next types of baits I'm going to be talking about to fill Joe's bag would be um, hard plastic swimmers. I mentioned the um, SP Minnow previously, it, as much as I throw it during the day. Very, very productive at night. I think I've probably done better at night. Um, but Opposed to many other wars like the bombers and whatnot that I'll show you what's important to mention is that you know it loads all the BBC bomb to you know make a very efficient cast and as that plug smacks and hits the water they flatten out that's what causes it to swim with the head and tail counterbalancing each other as opposed to you know swimming head down which looks retarded and swimming head up or whatever doesn't really look too good um, you know, very effective plug. I caught my personal best on it. I know you guys heard about that in previous lectures. Something very similar to that would be a bomber. Um, this is more of an old school plug. I know you're you're familiar with these. 
They don't tend to cast as well. Um, they tend to spin and tumble and whatnot, but they, they catch fish, retrieve it the same way you would an SP minnow, primarily at night. Um, just very good at, you know, especially this color mimicking shad and uh, maybe even bunker in, you know, early spring, mid spring. Um, last but not least, what I would throw in this category is the Yozori Magdor, excellent. I know you've used these on the boat, but, um, you know, fishing on, you know, the beach, whether it be the back bay, inlet, um, and whatnot, very, very effective. Um, typically, I throw these in the back canals too as well. They work great. Um, they're called a mag daughter, but they're very different from a regular daughter in that um, it has more of an, it's a hybrid bait. It has the action of an SP minnow, but the shape of a, a regular daughter. Um, and how I retrieve this, depending on the size of um, the rod, because I know Joe brought this to my attention. Um, you really want to dig it into the water column, you know, give it a good five, six, mm -hmm. seven turns, and then slowly retrieve it upwards. And what that's going to do is a slow flutter up and the, the fish just can't resist it. It just works so, so well. It's just the reaction strike, especially like I said, with the metal lips and whatnot, when the fish aren't actively meet, uh, feeding on a moving tide, like blitzes during the day you'd see in the fall and spring, yeah. it'll more often than not draw fish. And that pretty much covers those My buddy Dave things. absolutely loves that lure. Like he'll go to store and buy every single one of the mag daughters for it. He loves the mag yeah, they're, they're so good, uh, yeah. no matter what color you throw, and they, they, just, they just produce. We throw them in the back of Macy's all the time. Yeah, yeah they work really good on those big gators mm -hmm. right, too. Yeah, they they hold up. They got great stock hooks. No, on these types of plugs, I don't even change the uh, hooks out on the Yozori in particular. They just work great. They just hold up. If you, yeah. if you maintain your plugs and whatnot, they should last. Last but not least, I'll be talking about a handful of Super Strike swimmers that I would throw in uh, Joe's bag. And uh, the first I'm going to talk about. Uh, it has the same name, well, same name in it. It's a regular daughter as, expo uh, as opposed to a mag daughter. And, um, yeah, great nighttime plug. Um, I've caught, you know, a handful of fish. It's not my go-to plug, but when I know the bigger fish are around, you know, mid-teens to low 20-pound fish at least, you know, this is a great plug. It produces, um, it produced this past fall. I know a lot of guys I was talking to on the beach, yellow daughter. It's a, <clears throat> it's a given, you know. The old, um, the omen goes, you know, if you go to Montauk, you don't go to Montauk without a yellow daughter. And that's just the way it goes. Um, not really utilized around here. Don't really get those big bait patterns like we do out there from the surf. But it's always a good lure to keep in your bag because you don't know when and how and where it's going to happen. <clears throat> Another lure similar to that of the daughter is, as opposed to if you're fishing deeper water, unlike you would... The shallow rips with a daughter would be a bottle plug by Super Strike. Um, I believe this is a two and three eighths ounce. Um, a lot of the heavier plugs come in two and three eighths ounce. If you guys didn't know, red and black eyes sink and the green eyes float. Um, another great plug, this is something you throw in deeper rips if you fish around, you know, Democrat or a Fire Island Inlet. That's where you throw this type of plug. Um, a daughter won't get down as deep, and if you were to switch the rolls and fish this in shallow rips, you're just going to be digging into the sand and get hung up on swim rocks. Deeper, yeah, this is going to swim. This is pretty much a beefy, it's a beefy SP minnow, as my buddy Mike Killian would say. Um, and it just it works. It catches fish. Same thing, big body baits. It resembles, you know, yeah. herring and bunker. And uh, last but not least, uh, the last lure you should have in your bag is a needlefish. Um, this is great at resembling, obviously, needlefish, because that's the name. But, yeah. you know, I don't know if you remember, like, back in the day, we used to get a lot more uh, needlefish sure, in the back of yeah. But it's not like what it used to be. But, you know, it mimics other things great. Uh, sand eels, it works great. Uh, regular eels, it resembles great. Um, and just on a slow, slow retrieve. I had one day, I was fishing with my buddy Pino, and um, nobody could get a hit. Uh, he ties a needlefish on, first cast, gets one. Even though it was during the day, you know, you could expand your options. It's primarily a night lure, but, you know, sometimes you just got to cater to what the fish want, and that's just what it comes down to. How would you work that bait? I mean, there's no lip on it. There's nothing. It's just a plain little um, piece of something. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> that, that's the biggest knock on this lure, actually, in it's that. It's slow, a little jerk. It's very slow. You could actually jerk it and whatnot, um, but, yeah, it's just a piece of flat wood going through the water, flat plastic, because that's what they make plugs out yeah. of now. 
but people they're astounded. You know, our, my buddy Rob at Outdoorsman, he caught his personal best on a needlefish. Oh, he did really? Yeah, yeah thirty-seven, thirty-seven. Off of our <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, but yeah, just slow roll retrieve, or if the fish are much more finicky, I heard you know other guys have techniques where you actually put your finger in between the spool and let the line hit the finger, and that'll oh, make shit, that'll make it wobble, and that'll give it impart like different action as opposed to just a straight slow roll. So it's just you know small a secret right there. Small uh, little secrets to keep in keep in mind and different techniques to try if you're not yeah. getting bites or whatnot. Because um, either the um, the bottom of the ocean floor is covered with fish and you can't catch them, or you're doing everything right and uh, there's nothing there. So yeah. that pretty much just covers uh, what I would throw in uh, Joe's night bag. And same thing if you were to open it up, uh, you fit your garters and you know, metal lips. You know, metal lips could be a little bigger, so yeah, it's a big that's good. Plug. Yeah, it's a big fish plug. I have the whole thing mixed up, but you get the idea. It just hangs just like that. Put your bottles next to it. Put the daughter on the opposing side. Definitely not gonna get many lures in there with the night bag versus the daylight. No, bag. and you, much bigger profile. You definitely like feel that. you you feel the difference. Um, you know, the night bag for me uh, tends to be, you know, a lot heavier. You know, bigger fish are around. You're using bigger profile baits and whatnot. Um, put that in. Uh, you guys get the idea. You know, there's no there's no one way of doing this. It caters to all different t uh, size baits. And, uh, yeah, that's how I fill the bag. You ready to go fishing? Yeah, you ready to just... Strap it closed. Just throw some leader in it for me, some TA clips, and we're good to go. Yeah, and that's it. You know, that's all you need. You're good to go. And you're uh, walking tank down the beach, and that's it. Yeah. You know? Um, well, this spring, we're definitely going to do some surf fishing. I'm definitely looking forward to getting out there and, you know, trying it again. So it'll be cool, man. Yeah, for sure. And uh, last but not least, I'll uh, take uh, Joey. Um, I'll show him what I would use in terms of uh, my surf belt and my bags. So stay tuned. All right, so we got a preview of uh, what we put in Joey's bag and his tackle. I'll show you my belt and what I would throw. Merry um, Christmas to me. Yeah, Merry Christmas. <laughs> yep, you could have those, you know, no tax paid on it, you know. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, but, um, you know, if you want to step your game up instead of the uh, Bass Pro bag, if you want to get more into surf casting. Um, this is a $40 bag. Yeah. Now we're going to a multiple yeah. hundred dollar bag. The belt alone is 80 bucks, so you get the idea where this is coming from. <laughs> But um, beginner, yeah, expert. But uh, this is a um, this is a gear up surf belt. Got this for eighty bucks at J and H. You get any of your uh, higher end or local tackle shops, I'm sure, that uh, specialize in surf fishing gear. Um, what I like about it is it has the oversized Velcro. You know, I'm a thirty six waist, so this fits. You know, they they rank it medium large, extra large, double X. You get the idea. Um, what I like about this belt is. It's very sturdy. It gives you back support as opposed to the Aqua Skins belts where they tend to, they're made out of the Velcro material that's very thin. When you put plug bags on it, they tend to fold. They don't move the plug bags that well on the belt. Um, but they're great. Like I said, you open it up. It's got the big oversized buckle on it and just feeds right in. I'll show you guys in a minute. But without further ado, I'll get on to the bags I use. This is a Aqua Skins Elite Hunter bag. Um, I love this. I got this at Saltwaters, I believe, between 100 and 150 bucks. I don't know if that's taken into tax. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but some things I would carry in my bag that would benefit you too. Tape measure. I don't have a boga, so when I take measurements on fish, I do the conversion. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's length times width times width. That'll give you the approximate mm -hmm. weight of the fish. You know, retractable tape, boom, goes back in. Something else I would carry in the bag, very important. Hook sharpener, a stone sharpener. I believe I got this at G&H as, you know, spending X amount of money on a product. They send you stuff for free, whether it's stickers or other accessories. <clears throat> now as a, a preview to the inside of the bag, it's a two-tube bag. So I fit some of my heavier plugs in here. You can see that I have um, red fins, Little neck poppers, like I, I put in his bag, um, pencil popper gives, daughters, bunker snags, very important, like I mentioned. 
that pretty much covers that bag. But on the side of this bag as well, um, if you don't have a bulger and you're using tape like I do, get yourself get yourself a pair of Billy Bays. Get them at Salt Waters. Shout out to Salt Waters. Um, I also got the lanyard. It's a 10 foot lanyard. Um, I like the longer lanyard uh, mainly because it wears out a lot less. Um, it, the way I compare it is to a phone line, telephone yeah. cord to a, a landline is you got to pull that cord, pull that cord, and it's just going to tangle and, you know, get looped up. And I'm sure you guys have experienced that. Um, but <clears throat> it has a hole here on the side of the bag, just easy. Clip it on, clip it off, and clip it back on. Now in between this bag and my next bag, I have leader line. This is 50 pound Andy Mono. Very important to have. I'll, I would recommend it put in Joey's bag. Um, very important, especially a heavy line. You're fishing on the jetties and rocks and whatnot, boulder fields. You get a snap off if you use anything less than 30 pound test. Um, next, this is a Supreme. A uh, Surfrite Supreme bag, very, very good. I got this at J&H for, I believe, between 40 and 50 bucks. A lot more affordable than this bag, closer to this uh, price range, the Bass Pro one. In this bag, I would throw, if I can get open, <laughs> um, SP Minnows. You can see here, I haven't cleaned this bag out in a while, but you get the idea. Tins, uh, I got my diamond jigs. So my smaller profile baits, smaller baits, smaller fish, you get the idea. Um, go to my other side of this bag. I carry pliers. These are Evolution Americans. I like the, uh, you know, very patriotic. There's the red, white, and blue. You know, support that. Um, yeah, great. You know, it's got the lanyard as well. If you have a fish on, since, you know, if you're fishing at night or whatnot, Last thing you want is to drop, you know, 50 plus dollar uh, pliers in the water in between the rocks and you can't get them. Nice. Uh, it's just a waste of money, waste of time, and just be benefiting yourself. So uh, <clears throat> that brings me to the last accessory, which is an aqua skin bucktail uh, tin pouch, but it's great for bucktails as well. This is where I keep all my bucktails, whether it's my jetty casters for the inlet or, no, these are all jetty casters, I don't know. Or my uh, banana head style jigs, like these ones, which work great for the back bays. You know, things will mangle, but you get the idea. Uh, different size bucktails in here, and that covers you. This whole bell, I should say, covers you all those applications. And like I said, like Joey, the two of us are going to be a walking tank down the beach in terms of gear and being ready for that big fish bite. So, um... Yeah, that pretty much concludes this video. Um, this is Surfcasting Island. Nick from Surfcasting Island. This is Captain Joe Leggio, Chasing Tail TV and Fishing Long Island. Go check out his channel as well. And uh, if you guys don't mind, if you like the video, please like, hit that bell button, comment, and hit that subscribe button. So I hope to see you guys next time. And uh, stay tuned. Otherwise, thank you.